I'm gonna show you idiots who work for the police department what everybody knows y'all are doing. Y'all are processing the Golden Triangle. The United States Zero Tolerance Policy towards illicit drug use has helped turn a country with 5% of the world's population into one that holds 25% of the world's prisoners. But within these numbers lays another even more shocking statistics. African Americans, a minority group that accounts for just 15% of the U.S. population, comprise nearly 40% of America's prisoners. But why? Could it be that African Americans are really more inclined toward drug abuse? African American males are more likely to be stopped they're more likely to be searched. They're more likely to be arrested. Okay, first off, anybody, anyone, anyone of you in the urban police department who say you don't just stop a person because they're black or Hispanic, y'all's reports, this is y'all's words, the words of your department. You're 65% more higher. All police departments in the country are 65% more higher to stop a person because they're black or Hispanic. That's more than half. There's more than half in statistics if you don't understand numbers, but... Yeah. Say your bullshit for somebody who cares. So, uh, what happens in many cases is that they are literally told if you are I don't believe that uh, Congress, or for that matter, any other state has enacted any drug law, nor do I believe that any drug law, in my experience, has ever been enforced uh, for racial reasons. I See a smile on that man's face? Let's rewind it. Nor do I believe that any drug law, in my experience, has ever been enforced uh, for racial reasons. I think it... Yeah, he got him a nigger. But if African Americans aren't merely the targets of racial bias, then what could explain the chilling statistics related to drug abuse within their communities? January 1970, the United States enters the second decade of the Vietnam War. In the heart of a region known as the Golden Triangle, an area responsible for the majority of the world's opium production, the CIA recruited local tribesmen to help the U.S. war effort against North Vietnam. Under the leadership of General Vang Pao, Big drug dealer. known as the Secret Army, the good news was that Pao was bitterly anti-communist. The bad news was that he and his fellow freedom fighters were notorious drug dealers. All our allies in Vietnam made, made their livelihood by selling heroin around the world. Right in the brains and veins of our GIs, to our kids, to my brother. And they were protected because that was how they supported themselves. Congress wouldn't pay for them. It had now this is how that worked. In Vietnam, I think it was my dad says 60% of the GIs had a drug addiction. This is how that worked. They were, the CIA was not allowed to pay the Marvin Forces, General Chow, and all these other people. So what they did was they let them sell the troops drugs and take their paychecks, which is a form of getting paid off your narcotics. And they allowed them to transport narcotics into your country, which... Which fueled Frank Lucas's heroin epidemic. The thing they didn't say in Frank Lucas's case was the fact of the matter that Frank Lucas had the okay to get the heroin from the bases and all that other shit. American gangster never said that, but it's the truth. You know what? The CIA wanted to destroy the black community because we took over Detroit and we took over the auto industry and we were dominating at the time and they hated it. They hated it. Next tape's about crack. Join. Join me. The Red Faction is coming. Join the Red Faction Army. We will take back our country. This will not be a red, white, and blue country. This will be a strictly red country. And the red will be representing loyalty. 
loyalty for our fellow man. Not loyalty to a Zog system, but loyalty to our fellow man.